Good evening and welcome back to the first time home by a show. I'm your host, SD Class. And as you know, we've got amazing content coming to you live every weekday this week. We've got Zaman Tungwa Kumalo with the Private Property Podcast. That's every weekday at 7 p.m. And of course, Mbali comes to your screens with the Farming Podcast every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. And Chad Viveros travels the amazing Johannesburg and looks at gorgeous homes around Gauteng. That's every Monday and Friday at 8 p.m. Live your dreams through the screens and let's watch Chad travel Dane Fern all the way to Four Ways to Santon and to the gorgeous Houghton wherever you want to be Chad will show us the gorgeous homes that they have to offer and let's jump straight into this evening show I am with the absolutely amazing Mulatelo Boloy with us who goes by Lady Wa Property on Twitter giving us absolutely amazing gems dropping gems for first time home buyers as well as saving strategies and everything we need to know to start that property journey good evening Lati how are you today Hi, how are you, Esti? Thank, Thank you, you so much for having me. Thank you so much for coming on to the... Let me tell you something. Throughout our conversation, you have so many nicknames on Twitter. So yeah, I'm like, Lati, <laughs> Molatelo. Then it's Tolo Fellow this morning. I was... So what can I call you? I think Lati works. I think it's the common name that um, has gained traction in mm. my, the property industry. Yeah. Um, people call me Lady Wa Property. And yes. Um, it is very interesting for me um, how I have grown my profile within less than a year. Mm. And yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about the name Lady Wa Property, where that came from, how your journey started. Okay. So Lady Wa Property is so fascinating. Um, mm. One day, um, a Twitter profile, Sam was like, listen, what do you want to achieve this year? Uh, how would you contribute to society on Twitter, in short? And I was like, I'm not certain. I'm thinking, should I share information on emotional well-being or should I share on property? And he mm. said, just do it, you know? And then within the next 48 hours, I changed my profile. And I was like, listen, um, I am interested in first-time home buyers because mm. my experience with buying property, with buying my home when I started, I wish there was someone that can hold my hand. Yeah. And I think that was the intention behind it. And the more people that came onto my profile and read and I shared more information and it expanded and yeah. I looked forward daily to sharing information that I knew that I thought was common and here it is, yeah. here we are sitting here. Did you find out that it is common or was it not so common when you were educating those? Listen, um, it wasn't common. Mm. Um, I think I took, I shied away from what I've gained throughout the years, my journey, uh, the mistakes I've made. Um, I think I thought that people understood because there was always people saying there's support, there's an estate agent, there's a lawyer, there's this. But people needed more information yeah. or they needed a person to unpack it better for them mm -hmm. and to caution them on their decisions because I think what I try and achieve through my page is to share information so that home buyers become more accountable. Um, I think my analysis throughout um, the, the year, I learned that people had become, um, they'd, they'd become stakeholders. Right. Um, they'd become people that are just signing off their lives. Um, how, the example that I always put is guys, mm. please understand the process, understand what you're doing. Because if you look at the home that you're buying, um, at most, it can cost 30% of your income. Right. That's 30% of the hours in a day. So that's a big buy. I mean, how do you become just a spectator, a person that sits whereby decisions are being made about your time mm -hmm. and your money? It can't be. You, I've never ever looked at it like that. Wow, <laughs> yeah. that's so true. But now, I like that you said you want to educate first-time homebuyers to take accountability. Accountability for what exactly? Awesome. So accountability for your homes mm. um i think the idea is i want to own a home right i think you become accountable when you understand what that means mm. um i always say that the process of buying your home does not start off from the day you sign your documents right it starts off from the day you understand 
your buying power, mm -hmm. right? It, it starts off from understanding what it means to sign an offer to purchase, what a property inspection means. Yeah. I mean, people, or I used to do that, I would go in and I'd look at the cupboards. If I like the cupboards of the kitchen mm -hmm. and that it's got a garden, that was enough for me. Oh, wow. But now I'm asking them to think differently like a property investor. Yeah. So an investor's mindset thinks a little differently from a home buyer. Mm. We think in the manner that, is this value for money? Right. right. We think like you're in the construction industry, yeah, right? Yeah. You're sitting down and you're like, if a person is going to build a house, mm. the foundation has to be correct. Exactly. The structure has to be correct. The roofing has to be correct. So now I want home buyers to explore that, mm. to think of it that way. I don't want people to no longer look at the kitchens. I want people to question the value, right. the quality of the building. Mm. I want people to understand how the structures are, the different structures in, mm. in, in, in the development space. You know, there's an estate, there's a sectional title, there's a freestanding. What, mm. what are the implications? What am I paying for? Exactly. What does it mean? There is so much going on in the property industry and I'm just breaking it down crumble by crumble. Right. And I think that's what I mean when I say a homeowner needs to become accountable. Mm. You need to know what you're doing mm. so that when you speak of your property, it's not just a home, it's a structure for opportunity. Right. I love that you said think like an investor because a lot of the time we don't as first time home buyers. Yeah. It's a very emotional process and we hear that often on the show that home buyers, uh, let's say maybe you don't know just yet you want to become a property investor one day but if we start thinking like that and having that mindset before we even get into saying I want to be a property investor we've already laid the foundation for what we're gonna build one day yeah. and I love how you said we need to take accountability and understand what buying a home means for you what did it mean for you Lati when you started your journey Wow I think just to take you a bit back mm. For me, it was, it, was, it was an experience that I didn't think that it was meant for me. Mm. Um, I think it comes from being homeless. When I tell people this, they go like, that's, that's impossible. Yeah. Um, I think I always tell people that my pain mm. became my passion, right? Um, it, it became a place of security, right. a place of comfort. And I needed to expand more on my knowledge so that I can always maintain it. Mm. Um, as much as it started off from a place of, of, of security, a place whereby I felt like if I don't know better, I can lose it again. Yeah. My family can go through the same thing. Um, then it transitioned to there's a bigger world out there mm. um, because for example, when I meet people, I met a young gentleman that works with me, my mm. nine to five, and he's like, I know your prof. I'm like, you know me? I'm like, oh my word, you know? And, <laughs> but the bigger thing is this. He's like, you're an estate agent. I'm like, no, mm. I'm a property entrepreneur. And I just want us to go back to that um, because it tells me that people still think of property investing as just estate agents and owning a yes. property. And I was like, I know better. Mm. Um, I own a home, not only do I own a home, I provide homes to people mm. because I understand what the gap is. I understand the type of service I'm mm. looking for mm. and I'm giving people that. And for people to say, we know your brand, mm. you own home, you give homes, you tell us about our homes, I was like, okay. That's enough. <laughs> I can go eat cake. Can do it. <laughs> I can go eat cake, yeah. live my life. Let's, I want to take it back to that moment of um, like you said, you know, being in a place where you don't have anything. And I think that's the driving force is that you never want to go back there. I once spoke to a guest who said, uh, don't let poverty chase you. Like we need to run away from poverty, right? And uh, sometimes when you're in this position of having absolutely nothing, you've got so much more motivation and you, that fight yeah. is so much more with yeah. you. What was your biggest lesson that you learned in that time of of having absolutely nothing? I think my biggest lesson is understanding that I am not, I do not need to stay there forever. Mm. Um, I think my biggest lesson was I needed to understand that I have everything in me to take myself out of it. Um, when I started, I was looking for answers from 
everywhere yeah. and detrimental places because I don't know if it was the easy way out or it was, you know, I always say the loudest noises are not always the only solutions mm. because that was what I was accustomed to or that's what was exposed, you know, and association mm. um, changed my life. Um, I started seeing life differently. Um, you know the saying that is it half full or half mm -hmm. empty? Mm. I needed to change my mind. Um, I always write to people that the lady that you met four or five years back is not the same lady today because I needed to relocate myself yeah. um, to go and fetch my being. Lisa Nicole's like saying that your conviction is not uh, meant to make you stay in it. It's mm -hmm. meant to be your fuel. And I listened to her video so many times and I said, what does it mean? And she said, success leaves traces. Mm. And I was like, huh? It leaves traces? She says, when you are on a journey, be willing to go over and over and over again mm. till you speak like the people in the room. Mm. Because people are comfortable with with staying in places for a short period because they are looking for quick results. Yeah. Be okay with learning over and over up until you become the speaker right. in the same room that you were a visitor. Mm -hmm. And I think those are the things that I've learned through our time and I'm still learning mm -hmm. and I'm still applying them today. Yeah. Yeah. This also reminds me of what you said just before we started shooting about sitting in that struggle, sitting in that. And this is also something that I learned that we're so quick to just try and jump over it or jump over the, the hurdle mm -hmm. and then find it's done. But yeah. we never sit long enough mm -hmm. in that mess or in that feeling of having nothing or in that, in that feeling of I am struggling. We never sit long enough in that feeling in order to know what this is teaching us yeah. while we are. <laughs> like, yeah. And I think that's so, but I love that you said that earlier and I just wanted to find out from you what you have taught yourself. Because I think it's so important that yes, it's really great to invest in property, but, and it's really great to grow your property portfolio, mm -hmm. but are you growing you as a person? Wow. So here's the thing. Mm -hmm. um, I have learned that we find ourselves most in service um, because you see yourself in another person and you understand their desperation, you understand their needs and you come to have sympathy and apathy at the same time. And I think I am still learning. Um, I remember four weeks back, I was sitting with Genevieve. Um, she's the mentor, Genevieve Jack Stafford. Mm -hmm. and, and I said to her, um, you know, I've, I've seen people build these profiles on social media. And, 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 and I, I thought this is, but listen, now that I know better than them, I'm seeing these people are misleading us. And she says, no, they were not. Mm. They are as good as you are. Because there are some points where by even today, you think you know. 10 years later, you'll be a different woman and a different kind of breed because yeah. you would have grown better and you are going to fix your mistakes. Mm. Your audience is going to grow with you. Exactly. And you are allowing people into your space, not because you know better, but you're saying, I have a better exposure because of mm. one, two, three. Come, let's use my platform right. to learn together. And I think that is it. Um, knowing, um, realizing that Accessibility does not always mean you know better. Mm. It means you're willing to put yourself as a platform for conversations exactly. to lead people to a better destination. Mm. I, you know, I, I sit and I listen to you and I'm like, wow, you know, I'm so glad I found <laughs> you on Twitter. And that I can sit here and have this conversation with you because what's so important is that through your journey, yes, we're supposed to talk about first time home buyers and we're supposed to talk about property. <laughs> yeah. But through all of that, you always come back to thyself. When you're talking, you always come back to mentors and to um, educating those around you and, and motivating those to, to, to get onto a level where you're at or even surpass that level, you know? So I love that. And again, it just emphasizes the importance of thyself within this journey. Mm -hmm. You're extremely passionate, right, Lati, about Crazy. educating people. And yeah. yes, it's still a shock to you when people come to you and say, oh my God, you lady, what property, you know, on Twitter and you're doing these things. But what has been the most 
powerful moment for you. I, I know you work with people on the daily. Yeah. So there must have been maybe a moment or a situation um, in someone else's journey or even in your own journey that was like a big turning point for you. Um, I think it's when I created a link mm. and this lady came and she's like, listen, I am going through this in my life. It's not a comfortable place. And I could find my mother in it. Oh, and wow. I say, you always find yourself in yeah. service and you see yourself because my mom, my mom's marriage didn't go through. That's okay. That's part of life. And this lady was saying, I'm in a similar situation. And I saw my mother mm -hmm. and she says, listen, um, I am buying a house, mm. right? Um, and, and it's big, it's great, it's got pools, it's got five bedrooms and all these things. And what I always preach, the steps of your credit record, your financial health, what's your relationship with money? And I said, listen, I'm not a person that's interested in what's going on in your pocket, but I'm going to take my tools for free and give them to you so that you can understand if you can afford it or not. Yeah. That's the first big thing. Mm. And she says, can I please have your email? Because this is just a link. I have a link that I give. Yeah. Like, yes, definitely you're going to find it because I'm giving you my tools. And she came back and she said, can we have another session? And she says, listen, um, from our talks, I learned that I can't actually afford this house and I'm learning to have a strategy in property that I should refrain from ego buys mm. because this is a big buy. Mm. And she said, you know, I don't even think it was about the property. I think it was far more about my emotional well-being. Yeah. I was buying this house because I wanted the world to see that I am coping. Oh, wow. But in fact, the world will do just fine without them understanding whether I'm coping or not. Mm. And I think it is such moments that take me back and make me realize that I wish there was someone that could have told my mother that, mm. my aunt that, mm. people around us to say, start somewhere again, mm. start fresh, start with better knowledge, start with so much conviction, you've right. got this. Um, I think that's that's one of the moments that I look back and I'm like, whoa, mm. dude. <laughs> and almost like a, a moment of gratitude that you could be there to save that person because yeah. you were saving that person. <laughs> wow, well, that I mean, so deep. You know, we don't want to, yeah. because a lot of the time we do things because we're influenced by um, people around us and because we want to show, unfortunately, mm. you know, we come from a past um, yeah. where we weren't seen yeah. and in order to show this is what we do, that's why one of the biggest things that a lot of people in my community where I come from is we first buy a car because we want to show, we want to be seen, <laughs> yeah. which is... I was there as well, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Did you... I got off. <laughs> got off that train. Got off that train. Do you also think buying a car is a mistake? I don't think it's a mistake. I don't think... I always tell people that personal finances mm. are a beauty and I've got a friend that says stay in your lane <laughs> and I never understood it. She's big right now. She's, she's, I'm like, oh my word, I know you. Um, <laughs> she's big. She's big. She's doing great for herself. Mm. Um, but I think here's the conversation. I don't think there's a mistake if you understand your actions. Right. Um, for instance, um, I'll take it back to my car story. Yeah. When I bought my convertible, I had hair. Oh, wow. The breeze was going through my yeah. hair. But I didn't understand that I'm stealing away the opportunity to optimize on my income. Mm. Um, I didn't understand that income buys income, which buys desires. Mm. Um, and at that point, um, it was relevant. I needed to taste the soft life so that I can desire it more. Ooh, you know? <laughs> it, it was very relevant. Yeah. But I think I, I would groove it because here's my conversation. I don't mind a car, but if my car robs me of a comfortable future, yeah. then that's no longer a good buy. No. So that's my conversation. If you can afford your car, listen, by mm. all means, I'll be the passenger. Right. Um, but personal finance is personal. Be very personal. Be very honest. Uh, convict yourself. Um, unpack it. Mm. Um, understand what your vision is. Mm. Um, always look towards the future with your finances. Um, the present always takes care of itself. True. It always does.
I like what you're talking about, um, you know, income makes income. And one of the most difficult things, especially for first time home buyers or property investors starting out is budgeting, saving, just having enough money <laughs> yeah. and being in a, in a place of security where that if you do make that big buy or you do, you know, take that, take that risk because yeah. it's a risk game, this thing, yeah. that you'll still be okay and you'll be safe, financially so. So what would you say is your biggest, and I'm gonna ask you like you're educating us because this is what you do on the daily, so yeah. I don't even wanna know what you do. <laughs> what okay. advice do you give uh, first time home buyers in order to save and to budget correctly? Okay, so here's the thing. Mm. Um, I, I try and change their mindset in this way, that you don't only save money, when you buy, you save money when you are in the house. Uh. So when you buy your property, there are points whereby you should negotiate, right? Mm. Um, it's the first negotiation that I always throw to people is when the bond originator, the person that comes from the bank, from different banks and says, listen, this is the interest rate you can get. That is not set in stone. Right. That is the first document you're getting from your bond originator. Yes. Tell them, I always say it's not about um, if they give you a certain percentage and you're happy, it's always about how low can you go. Mm. That's mm. money. You yeah. are saving money by saving on your interest rates. Yeah. Go back to and say, but I think, because I understand my credit profile, listen, I think actually I'm a good client. Right. Right. I am an awesome client. Yeah. Can you get me something better? Mm. As soon as that is done, go on to the bank and say, listen, since you are saying that you can see that I'm a good client, can you help me on the legal costs as well? Right. Can you take care of 50% of those? Because listen, then we're in business. Right. Think like a business person. Mm. Then go on to the state agent and say, listen, I have heard you're selling it. Can we negotiate? Yeah. Right? That's another. That's another way. Mm. You're saving money. Mm. Then the next step is to understand what you're buying. Don't try and be a jack of all trades like I used to be, guys. <laughs> try and get a team, mm. right? Um, one of the team, very important team members that should form part of your process is a property inspector. Mm. Negotiate with the property inspector. Even. Every person that you speak to is an opportunity to negotiate. Yeah. And I always tell people negotiation should not come to a point whereby when you leave a person, you leave them hurt mm. as though they're not giving you value for money. Negotiation means that can we both get something out, out of, of it? Yeah. That's very important mm. because then when the person services you, they are happy to work with you over and over and over again. Right. And actually they might even give you a, a better network of people in the future and say, listen, yeah. I think that's the other person that you need because mm. I saw this from your house. You see, that builds your even team. Yeah. That builds your team. Mm. So I think it's, it steps over and over. So that's the first process. There's a lot that goes into it, yeah. but that's the first one. Mm. The second one I always tell people is that life, when you take care of yourself, life responds, right? Mm. What do I mean? For instance, when you take care of your finances, your credit score improves, right? When you understand it, right? Mm. Um, when you, the more you grow, opportunities expand mm. and your income expands. That in a way also improves your credit record because mm. listen, you're getting more income and you know how to take care of your finances. When that changes, go back to the bank and say, listen, I am an even better client. <laughs> listen, yeah. I know, yeah. I know it. Yeah. I need you to review my interest rates. Because so many a times as homeowners, we sit back for the 20 years and we're like, we know we're paying 5K, we're okay. We're okay. We're okay. Mm. We're okay. But I think if you do that and you use your bond or payment, uh, extra payment calculator yeah. and you track your spending and you track what you're paying and what those payments mean for you, yeah. you have a different vision all up together, mm. you know? Um, I think that's what's so important. Understand where you can actually save money and when you do, please don't chow that money. Yeah. Take it back into it's that about, bond mm. because as much as it sounds like it's not so much, it's a lot. I always say the, the more you take from the bank, mm. the bank is in business. Yeah. The more you pay back, the longer the debt, of the course. more you pay back. Yeah. yeah. And I think what I've, I've just taken from this is that negotiation is definitely a power tool that we need in our bag of tools when going on this journey. 
But my biggest thing is because you've just introduced me to different types of people where I can negotiate, where, you know, a lot of first-time homebuyers don't even know that they can negotiate with the bank. Yeah. And we're so afraid to just even try and ask for less. Because you're right, we have access to looking at what our credit record is, mm -hmm. right? Um, there are apps, there's everything these days that show you, okay, no, yeah. but you're great. Your score is high. Yeah. But it's about having the confidence also to yeah. go to the bank and be like, come on. Yeah. And you're right, we're business partners. With all of these institutions, we are business partners. Yeah. We don't owe them, right? No. <laughs> it's about changing the mindset, which is yeah. another tricky thing. Yeah. Um, yes, Lati, so I was gonna, you know, it's really easy to say, negotiate with all these different channels and, um, but I think the big question, the burning question, I'm sure of a lot of viewers at home as well, is how do we negotiate with the banker? What do we say? What do we do when we get there? What, how do we have that conversation of negotiation with the bank? Okay, awesome. So here's the situation. First mm -hmm. of all, obviously you're motivated to go to the bank to say, the reason why you are asking for negotiation can be because you are not coping with your repayment. That is valid as well. Yeah. Uh, banks want to maintain clients. Mm. Let's not get it wrong. Just because you're struggling does not mean the business does, the banks don't want your business. Right. If you're struggling, it's okay to go back and say, guys, I don't want to lose the house. I think because of my situation, can you please help me? Mm. You know, um, they might come back and say, we'll give you a lower interest rate, or because your risk profile is not the base, they might say, let's rather expand it, you right. know? And when you are better, we can come back. But when you are diggity bomb, you know, mm. when you've got it, you're like, listen, I've fixed my finances, or my life is better, you know, I am eating well, yeah. life is soft. It's a matter of going first to your bank, uh, just ask for the home loans division, mm -hmm. and explain to them that, guys, I understand my buying power right now. I understand the changes in my life. Mm. I'm not looking to go bigger. I'm not buying a better house. I just yeah. want you guys to review my interest rates. Okay. They might go like, okay, we'll give you. And we're like, mm, 0.5, 0.3. You're like, okay, if that's the situation, let me sleep on it, right? right. And when you sleep on it, you like go to other banks and say, listen, you and you and you. listen, I am interested in knowing that if I shift my home loan account, how much more mm. would you be willing to give? Mm. Remember, I always say, you are the client. Yeah. He that holds the money, he that holds the honey pot makes the rules. Right. And and that's a change of mindset. Normally we like oh, the bank. No, the bank is looking for you. They want you, yeah. They want they want your business. Yeah. Then you go to other banks, you like, they'll give you furthermore interest rates with mm. your current one of that point three or point five. Mm. They might go like, listen, if it's really good, they might say one percent, right? If it's one percent, you go back to your old bank and mm. say, but listen. You want to keep me? This is what the other banks are offering, offering me. Can you match them or beat them? Right. So already, if you always tell people one percent looks like nothing yeah. on paper, yeah. but if it's one percent of a million over a twenty-year period, that's a lot of money yes. you're saving. Go and actually do the numbers. Mm. And when you do land on that one percent saving, whatever percentage, please don't mm. increase. Please don't think your home loan uh, payments are decreased. Yeah. Think like an investor. Yeah. Take them back into your home loan because you are used to paying that exactly. and maintain it because it will cut. The 300 rand can cut two to three years off of yeah. your bond. Yeah. Um, and I think the other thing that I always tell people that when you go negotiate, um, it's not only about the, the amount that you're paying. Yeah. It's the period that you're paying right it's your excess bond right exactly. if you have extra money into it you've done well yeah and people should come and pat you on the back and say but you've done well mm. we are willing to actually meet you halfway exactly. and i think the more homeowners that can go out and stop that behavior the more the banks will be more lenient towards us because exactly. we are trying to get homes yeah. at the end of the day yeah. um and i think yeah try the strategies Come back and tell me and say, listen, oh, you it, know, worked. it worked. Mm. That's all. Mm. That's all I need. Because I also, I also believe that obviously there's different strategies for different people. We're all Definitely. sitting with different bank accounts here. Definitely. So when going and different credit records and credit scores. So what's so important is, and I love that you, you know, continue to uh, give us the advice, is because you get to come into our world. Yeah. And you know, we get to yes, of course, you're using your own experiences and previous. Um, mentees experiences that you've used before mm -hmm. but what's so powerful is that 
I know that when you leave here today, I've learned something. <laughs> like you that left something in, whether you educated me um, with the conversation we had before, even now during the show. But so I want to say thank you for coming. Um, but so I also, much. before you go, I want to <laughs> ask you a very, uh, I don't think it's a personal question, okay. but I'd love to hear your answer just because I know where you, your background, where you come from. And I don't know where you're going, but we know you're going somewhere <laughs> big, high places. The definition of the word home. Wow. What does that mean for you? Home. Home means comfort, mm. um, opportunity, um, expansion. Home for me is, it's a place where you could always go back and find yourself. Yeah. Because the world is so cold at times. Um, home is a resting place. Mm. Um, uh, I've shifted from home being a structure and home being experiences. Yeah. Home is an experience, it's an experience of relations, an experience of love. Mm. Yeah. And <laughs> I love that you said expansion because to continue to build and grow on those beautiful words you just used <laughs> um, is something we all want, right? It's, it's like we all want to reach for that, that feeling when you're, when you're at home. Because I, I, I believe home can be a person. I've always believed. It is. Yeah. 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 I've always believed home can be <laughs> like someone, a people even, a Definitely. city, you know? Yeah. Um, which, so thank you so much. I love that you shared that with us. And I am 100% sure that you've left your mark here and thank that you. people are learning from you on the daily. So continue to do what you do uh, on Twitter. And I know that before this, you said that, you know, you're a little bit <laughs> scared to take it further. Please do. We need you. We need to be educated by people who, like you said, people resonate with you because they look like you, they sound like you, they understand where you come from because they come from a similar walk of life. We need that. So thank you so much thank and continue to do so great. Much. Thank you guys so much for having me. Um, I always say when people choose you, um, that's privilege. Mm, thank you so much. We are privileged. <laughs> yeah. to have you here thank you so much Lati to everyone watching at home thank you so so much for joining us you know we're live every Wednesday evening at 8pm take care and we'll see you there